Are auto increments better than UUIDs? That's the wrong question. A better one is, is better a server-side ID generation or a client-side ID generation? Let's talk about it. From a data format perspective, auto increment are quite straightforward. Let's use an 8 byte integer for our cases. Auto increments are basically simple counters, resulting in sequences like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. UUIDs, on the other end, are more complex. A UUID is a 16 byte block of data where byte 7 contains 4 bit reserved for the version, indicating which type of UUID it is, while byte 9 holds 2 bits reserved for the variant. There are multiple versions and variants of UUIDs. The two interesting ones are version 4 and version 7. Version 4 UUIDs consist of random data, making them suitable when uniqueness is the primary requirement. On the other end, version 7 UIDs incorporate a timestamp along with some random data, making them useful when ordering or time-based information is needed. If generated correctly, the probability of collision is extremely low, so for practical purposes they are considered unique. There are also other formats like ULID, similar to version 7 UUIDs, they also contain a timestamp and random data. However, they are encoded as base32, which makes them more compact compared to UUIDs. Another kind of ID is the Twitter Snowflake. Instead of relying on random data, Snowflake IDs include specific information like a machine ID and a sequence number. These are designed for distributed system, where each machine is assigned to a unique ID, and the sequence number ensures the uniqueness within the machine. Understanding the difference between them can help you choose the most appropriate format for your specific requirements. Now, let's examine two examples to understand when auto-increment and UUIDs should be used. First, we will consider an authentication system that uses auto-increment IDs. We have a table containing username and password, and for each row we have a user ID generated by the database auto-increment. We also have a separate table to store additional data where we use the auto-generated user ID as the record key. From a client perspective, when a user is created, the client sends the username and password to the service. The service then inserts the corresponding row into the database, which triggers the generation of the new user ID. Finally, the ID is returned to the client, and at this point, the client can send additional data to insert or update user information. The crucial point to note here is that we have to wait for the generation of the user ID before we can create any related data. However, in this case, this is acceptable because the user creation is a blocking step and we should not be allowed to proceed with any actions before the user is validated. But let's explore a different scenario. Imagine a mobile app that may work offline and allows users to place orders. In this case, we face a challenge of generating unique IDs for the order. One approach is to collect all the order data on the client side, generate a temporary client ID, and then send the data to the service. The service will then replace the client ID with the new auto-incremented ID generated by the database. However, this approach can introduce complexity and potential problems. A simpler solution is to store directly the client-generated ID in the database. This way, the client can create an ID for the order from the device. Later, when the app establishes the connectivity, it can send all the order data to the service. By storing the client-generated ID, we can avoid unnecessary complexity and potential issues associated with modifying IDs. This approach allows offline functionality while ensuring unique identifiers for each order. So the choice between auto-increment and UIDs depends on the specific requirement of your application. Instead of comparing auto-increment IDs to UUIDs, let's consider the difference between server-side generated IDs and client-side generated IDs. If we use the server-side approach, we can benefit from the simplicity of generating sequential IDs. Sequential IDs are sortable, and even by looking at them, you can identify which row was generated before or after another. And we can use a compact 8-byte integer for storage, resulting in efficient comparisons. However, the downside is that we rely on a central authority, such as the database, to generate IDs. This means that our application cannot work offline. I strongly discourage the approach of using temporary client IDs and replacing them later with server-generated IDs. This approach introduces complexity and makes debugging more challenging. Having a central ID generation point also limits scalability and can complicate the database migration and merges. 
It's also important to note that sequences are predictable. If we have ID 1, it's likely that there is also 2. If we have ID 10, it's likely that there is an ID 8. This predictability can become a security risk if leaked to the user interface. However, simple techniques like encryption or prime multiplication can help create less guessable IDs for user-facing purposes. On the other end, with a client-side approach, we eliminate scalability issues. Each client generates globally unique IDs and merging multiple databases become easier as long as the IDs remain globally unique. Depending on the format used, such as UID version 7, ULIDs, or Snowflakes, we can retain sequential ordering properties of auto increments, while also gaining timestamp information. If sort order is not a requirement, and the key is primarily used for DRL lookups, UUIDs before provide a good distribution, make this suitable for distributed hash maps. Moreover, since these IDs are run random or semi-random, they can be directly used in URLs. The downside of client-generated IDs is that they consume more storage and memory space compared to simple integers. Using the raw data doubles the space required from 8 to 16 bytes. Text encoding can result in even larger sizes, ranging from 26 to 36 bytes, and this can impact performance, as the larger key will be slower to compare. Also, from a human perspective, larger semi-random IDs can make reading logs and debugging more challenging. Ultimately, the choice between server-side and client-side generated IDs depends on the specific use case. If offline functionality is required, a client-side approach is necessary. For scalability, consider the long-term plans for your database. If a single database will handle the service for the next five years, auto-increments may be okay. If sort order is important, consider auto-increment IDs or IDs that include a timestamp component, like UUID version 7 or Snowflake or ULIDs. In conclusion, the decision should align with the requirements of your application. Evaluate the need for offline functionality, scalability, sort order, and performance consideration to determine whether server-side or client-side generated IDs are the right choice for your specific use case. Keep in mind that those IDs are probably just one part of your key. Check out the video about database indexing to understand how the data layout can influence your query performance. And if you want to know more, leave a comment below.